people into it. It's me, Sol SG1, coming at you for Star Trek, the official Star Ships collection review. This time we're doing issue, hmm, mystery. Uh, USS Titan, we're doing one of the uh, specials that they did. Uh, finally have it. I finally, it came this morning. Um, I finally have it. It's been five fucking months since I, since they went, oh, we've got it on the website. Sold out in, a, like, literally a matter of seconds. And, um... I got me Aventine, but I just couldn't get this one. But now I have it. So I've got the Titan, as per usual. Nice glossy magazine. And the model of the ship itself. So more on that in a little while. So we shall get cracking on, shall we? Yeah, the Titan um, falls into the region of canon and not canon at the same time. I mean, this design that they used um, popped up on Star Trek um, Online. Uh, which, again, touched the line of being canon but not canon. Um... But it, the Titan is mentioned in um, um, Star Trek Nemesis. So anyway, we'll get on to this. Specification. USS Titan. Um, oh, registered number NCC 80102. The highest registered number. Um, type Deep Space Explorer. Launch 2379. Um, Crew 350, top speed warp 9.9, .9. weaponry type 11 phaser rays, torpedo launchers, captains William T. Riker. Uh, and then we get a quite a nice CG shot of the ship there, entering orbit, or leaving orbit. The USS Titan was a multi mission explorer that entered service 2379. Captain Riker was a veteran of Starfleet flagships, um, the USS Enterprise D and the Enterprise E. Um, served as first officer under Captain Jean-Luc Picard before he had served as first officer on the HUD NCC uh, 4296 under Captain Robert DeSoto. And we get the topographical view, which is quite nice. Uh, top and bottom views. No side view, but top and bottom views. Oh, and a rear view for some reason. Hmm, interesting. Um, Centerpod, one of the USS Titan's mission parameters was act as a test bed for experimental technologies and it was equipped with a large sensor pod that was similar to the design used on the Nebula class ship such as the USS Phoenix. This interchangeable pod was kept clear of the ship's shielding. Um clear of the ship shielding it from Oh, clear of the ship, shielding it from interference from the ships of the systems. Also houses the torpedo launchers as well by the look of it. Designing the Titan uh, the events of Star Trek of the USS Titan has been documented in a series of novels published by Simon, Simon, Simon and Schuster, uh, taking, starting with um, Taking Wing, which published in uh, April of 2005. Wow. 2005, wow. Uh, Oh yeah, the Luna class USS Titan was designed as part of a competition by Simon and Schuster, uh, the publish who published Star Trek novels. It was it has gone to, gone on to appear in touring exhibition of Starships Online calendar comics and and in Star Trek Online. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a competition that they had to design the ship. Um, I submitted a design and never read anything um, way back in the day. And there you go, they've got some few um, sort of designs of it there. Um, I think the only specification was it was bigger than Voyager, but not quite big as the Enterprise E. Um, so somewhere, it falls somewhere in the middle of that. And, and that, I think that was about it, I think. A science ship. And there's various designs of it there, which is, which is always really cool. Always cool, I like all this sort of stuff. Um, and then we've got the uh, the lovely image from the book there. It's real nice. And in the first printing of the book came with um, plans of the ship, which is really cool. Um, yeah, first printing of the of, of sort of Damocles included full colour, fold out, um, showing the showing Tangiro's design. And then we've got some more images of the ship as well. Uh, you, I mean, there's like three D printed versions of it. CG renders, um, some shuttle, possible shuttle craft that they might have used, which is really cool. And then it's sort of an aero wing type thing as well. And the bridge as well, they designed the bridge. Uh, infinite diversity in infinite ways, which is really cool. 
um, which is a cross between the Enterprise D bridge and the Enterprise E bridge, which is really cool. Um, which I think they used on Star Trek Online. Um, and there's a possible um, refit of the, of the Lunar class there, which is really cool. Um, and that's your magazine, really. Um, quite good, quite good. Um, goes into a lot about the design and the ship. And it's just a fingerprint, fingerprint magnet for some reason, this one. And that's the magazine done. So I'll put that down there for now. And onto the ship itself. And here it is. It's very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, indicative of... Oh, nearly dropped it, but I caught it. Indicative of late 24th century designs like Enterprise E and the um, Akira and stuff like that. And you can see that it looks like a cross between the Enterprise E and an Akira class. Which is not a bad thing. One issue I do have with it is... The nacelles are not clear plastic. That that is a fucking crying shame. It really is. I mean, they've even got it on Wolf Three Five Nine ships, and they've even got it on the test bed of the uh, Enterprise C there. You know, but not this one. Um, mm, disappointing. Disappointing panda. Um, yeah, but there's clear plastic in the nacelle in the uh, Buzzard collectors, and very deeply in the um, impulse engines there, which is really cool. Um, it is lacking a bit of detail here in there, especially along uh, this bit. There should be like some more detail in there, and the reg name and registry number on there. There's no Aztecan at all on the bottom. In fact, there's no Aztecan on the ship at all. In fact, do you know what? Let me get the let me get the ship. So look. Yeah. You can just make out a little bit of Aztec in the uh, computer design there. And the computer uh, CG image, there we are. Which they haven't put into this. It has no Aztec in on it at all. A um, little bit disappointing. Um, because a bit of Aztec in just brings out the detail. The details as well, especially on the the underside here. You can see it. I don't know if this camera's going to pick it up. The underside of the um, escape hatches, the escape pod hatches, they're quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for, they're not, they're not really detailed out, so it's like the mould hasn't been sculpted very well, um, clear plastic, mm, now there's an interesting bit, it's a clear plastic um, deflector dish, but they've just put clear plastic in there and it's all blue plastic. You know, they've not really painted it very well. Um, is that how it goes? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to keep referring to the magazine. Yeah, they just stuck it, stuck a blue blob in there and not really painted it. Yeah. Oh, I've got something else as well. It deviates. Let's just see what it says on the plans. Yeah, that's weird. It seems like they've coloured the wrong bits. <laughs> Where the main deflector dish housing is there, you've got two grey bits, but on the actual model, it's the other way. You've got three. Where is it? You've got three grey bits there, so they're actually coloured in the wrong bits grey. <laughs> um, what else have they missed? Yeah, actually, yeah. They have... One thing I can say about it, there's no window misalignment because the windows are actually painted on and there's no indents for them. One thing I will say though is they've gone, you see these details here and here, these grey bits, they're grey on there, but on here they're more like a sort of a greeny colour. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it out. They're slightly sort of a coppery green colour. Hmm, hmm, disappointing. But I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I must admit, I mean, it's it's from a ship that technically has never been on screen, unless you count Star Trek Online, but, um, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's another Federation ship, at least, and it? it's another class of ship that we've got, because we've got lots now. You know, we've got um, Galaxy, Constitution, um, Ambassador, Cheyenne, Springfield, uh, New Orleans, uh, Walker... Crossfield, although my Discovery Store hasn't come yet. Uh, Miranda, uh, Wells, um, 
you know, loads now. There's just so many class Federation ship classes. It's just unbelievable. And it's nice to see as well. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm glad I have it. But it's not without its faults, I must admit. This seems like... It, this this particular one feels like this is the prototype that we're going to make and go, right, we can make this ship. It's going to look like this. this these are just sort of, you know... Um, that's where the plastic's gonna be, you know, because um, it would have put it would have been a lot of plastic in there, actually. You know, I mean, there's no detail on long here at all. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it is a bit strange, I must admit. Um, but I'm sure um, the guy who's making the decals can make some uh, more decals up, you know, um, because I would put. I'd put the name and registry number here, and maybe get a Titan along there and a registry number there. Um, we're on the bottom. We've got. Um, we just say USS Titan on the uh, shuttle bay there. And where else would I put name? Because it's got the USS Titan and the registry number on the bottom there. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's just a bit plain. It's a bit lacking. It's just a bit of a shame, really. Um, but overall, the design is nice. Uh, it is a really cool design. Um, although I would have put this a bit further back and, and it extended a little higher. Um, but you know, it's not too bad. And I've got a bit of flash. You're not going to see that at all, but I can see a little bit of flash. And if you, yeah, you can just see it. And let me see if I can get... See where my, see where my thumb is there? You can just make out a bit of flash residue. So we look about here. You see it waggling right inside there? Um, how am I going to get that out? Let's see. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can get it live on camera. Yeah, got it. Excellent. Brilliant. That's better. It's a lot better. Um, I mean, there's no detail under there anyway, but it doesn't matter because you can't, see, you can't really see the detail underneath there. But, you know, I'm glad I have it. I am really chuffed to have it. It's really cool. Um, it's nice to see them do different ships. Um, so, get rid of that. Stand. And it is a first run one because it's AA. Uh, this is Titan, NCC80102, and it fits on the stand thus. I mean, this will fit very well in your late 24th century ships. You know, like, you, if you're doing them by, by year, this would be great next to the Enterprise-E, um, Voyager, um, Akira-class and uh, Sabre-class and all those guys. It would fit in really nice there, because that's where it's caught. That's where it comes from. That sort of time period. Um, yeah, should you get this? Yes, you should. Um, it, it's a nice sort of mid. It's it's a, it's a nice. What's the word I'm looking for? It's one of those. It's one of those um, weird ones because it's not. It's canon, but it isn't. You know, because they do mention it in Nemesis, but it's not quite canon. You know, we've never actually seen it on screen. But then again, we never saw the Bradbury on screen, and that's considered canon. So, I wonder if we get that ship. Hmm, interesting. Yes, the Bradbury. Uh, apparently, it was an experimental ship. Uh, the Bradbury class. I don't think it was ever designed. I think it was just named in the episode. You know, for Ray Bradbury. Anyway, I'm getting um, carried away. But yeah, very nice, very cool. It'll look great on your shelf for your Federation ships. Um, and if you're just collecting Federation ships, then yes, you really must get it. So that's me. Um, please like, share and subscribe to this video and you can um, donate to Patreon. Um, donate a pound a month um, and you will get your name in the credits. Um, I'm not going to put credits on until I get started getting Patreons. I've actually sorted it out now. Um, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so please like, share and subscribe. Hit me on Patreon if you like. Um, and... Uh